Elizabeth Isabel Oakshot from the Daily Mail, George Eaton from the New Statesman, uh, both been immersed here in the spin room in the great excitement of our referendum event. Um, Isabel, if I could start with you, who do you think emerged ahead in that contest between Farage and Cameron? Well, I think it was quite a well-balanced contest, actually, and I think that both the key participants will be fairly satisfied with their performance. There was, of course, some nervousness on the part of a lot of Brexit supporters as to whether Nigel Farage would get a mauling from the audience, and he did indeed face some very robust and tough questions, and I think he handled them with good dignity and poise and very effectively. And the and vote leave concern that he would come out completely obsessed well, with immigration, did I he... Think did he allay some of their fears on that? I think that it was difficult for him to move off that subject because clearly a lot of the questioners were very interested in how he responded on that. But I think he would have been pleased to be able to get in a rebuttal on the issue of the comments that he made. That in the ones that have been criticised by the Archbishop. Indeed, the, the, the Archbishop and he, said was, was, he racist. was very clear that people should actually read what he said rather than the overdramatic headlines. So I think he would be happy with that. George, do you agree that they were sort of a score draw or do you, do you book? you put one ahead of the other? I would put David Cameron ahead. I think he got the balance right between rejecting uh, Leave's central arguments while reaching out to the unpersuaded. Of course, it's swing voters who decide referendums like this. And I thought David Cameron managed to reflect his unhappiness with the way, his frustration with the way the EU works, while also arguing that the problems that the UK would face from leaving outweigh the problems it would face from remaining. And I think Vote Leave's uh, fears about Nigel Farage weren't entirely confirmed. There were no standout gaffes from him tonight, nothing completely outrageous. But I think he showed why he's a 15% politician, not a 50% one. He's one who appeals to the base uh, on immigration. I don't think he offered sceptical swing voters enough reassurance on the economy for, for Leave to significantly improve its performance based on tonight. Um, Isabel Oakeshott, if you look at the opinion polls and the bookies' odds, momentum in the last few days has been more with the Leave side. Mm -hmm. Do you think this contest tonight will change that? Well, actually, I don't think that. I think that Leave does have the momentum at the moment, and I think there's a very interesting piece of video footage out tonight from Vote Leave, which shows David Cameron giving his wholehearted, and I quote, wholehearted support to Turkey joining the EU. So I imagine that will be making headlines tomorrow, and that, of course, plays directly into the hands of the Brexit campaign. And do you think there was anything tonight that mm. will trouble the front pages in the morning? I think David Cameron saying reform doesn't end on, on the day of the referendum is quite significant. I mean, that inevitably invites the question, what kind of reform, what, what more does he think he can achieve? Um, if that's not clear, that's something that, that Leave will challenge him on. And I also think Nigel Farage doubling down on his warning of, of sex attacks from migrants, responding, rebutting the Archbishop of Canterbury, that interesting clash, I think, uh, will probably get the most attention. George Eaton, Isabel Oakshock, thank you so much. And back to you. Robert, thank you uh, very much. Now, tonight's referendum programme was just the first of two this week. The ITV 